So, as a lot of you may know, I recently spent 9 days in Japan. It was my first time visiting the country, and it was a fantastic time overall. Obviously, while here, I was able to get a lot of filming in for various video projects I have planned for the coming weeks now that I'm finally back. Also conveniently enough, while I was over in Japan, Disney actually held their annual fan convention, that being D23, in the good old US of A! It just so happened to announce a plethora of upcoming projects, including a lot of new attractions coming to their theme parks, which has definitely been raising a lot of concern over many Disney enthusiasts and people who love the parks, given a lot of these changes seem pretty drastic. Interestingly enough, while in Japan, I happened to visit two Disney parks while there. That being Tokyo Disneyland and Disney Sea, it was very interesting to see the differences between how the Japan parks are handled and the American one. So for today's video, I thought I'd make a successor of sorts to a video of mine I made about 10 months ago as of me making this video, where I compared Universal Studios for my first time going in Orlando to Walt Disney World. Except in this video, I'll be explaining my experience at Tokyo's Disney parks and explain their handling of it and compare it to the current state of the American parks and explain what is working and what clearly isn't. But before we begin, be sure to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm a full-time content creator and every little bit helps me out quite a bit. If you know someone who might like this kind of content too, feel free to share with them. And if you'd like to further support the channel if you're able, consider supporting me as a channel member here on YouTube. Channel members get exclusive content, but also get to vote on what I cover next during the channel. But anyway, on to today's video. So in order to properly compare these types of parks, given they're in totally different kinds of countries, I want to take a look at three different factors. Factor one, is presentation and environment. This one just kind of refers to how well kept the park is basically and also how well presented it is and how easy to navigate it also is. Factor number two is a variety of attractions, which basically just means how well represented are a lot of different genres and types of rides and attractions at the, the parks. We have a huge variety of types of rides and representation or is all kind of the same. And factor number three, most importantly, will be satisfaction of customers at the parks. So let's begin with that first factor, presentation and environment, and look at Walt Disney World in particular. So Disney World in its current form is basically a weird mishmash of classic ideology that Walt Disney himself had with a lot of the rides that are represented there. Since a lot of the classic rides are still at Walt Disney World, but also trying to put in new IPs and new rides and sort of using it as a way to cross-promote those sort of things. Because of the sort of weird halfway ideology that Disney currently has with their parks, the parks are sort of a weird mishmash of like very classic attractions like Pirates of the Caribbean or Big Thunder Mountain or Haunted Mansion. All of those are still well represented at the parks and a lot of other ones too, like Tom Sawyer Island for now, anyway, and also other things like Rivers of America or Space Mountain. But at the same time, the parks are almost becoming like an IP dumping ground, specifically Walt Disney World. Like throwing on a whole Star Wars land or a whole Avatar land in Animal Kingdom where it doesn't really have too much relevance there at the end of the day. This is purely being done as a cross-promoting method for Disney to shill some of their biggest IPs, and this is actually even further shown at D23 with them announcing a, a lot of the same kinds of attractions Actions even. From announcing a whole Cars Land to replace Rivers of America and a whole Monsters Inc. Land to go in Hollywood Studios, which by the way, don't close down Muppet th Vision 3D Disney, that would be really, really dumb. And also just a giant middle finger to Jim Henson, given that was the last project he worked on. Hashtag save Muppet Vision. There are plenty of announcements like this at the D23 conference actually, just a lot of IP based lands. And the reason Disney has actually started to do this is simply because Universal announced their epic universe plan for their park just a few months ago, and that clearly has Disney very panicked now. Unfortunately, all Disney really seems to have gleaned from the Universal Epic Universe announcement is just, oh hey, more IP lands! People like Monsters Inc, right? And people also really love uh, Avatar! Let's do more of that! And throw Indiana Jones in Animal Kingdom to boot! <laughs> but no, that isn't really what people want at all, Disney. The reason why Epic Universe actually excites people isn't just because of the lands themselves, although that is part of it, but it's not just because you can go to the IP lands and say, oh hey, look at this, I remember this thing. It's not that at all. It's because a lot of the rides shown at those IP lands actually look very appealing to a lot of theme park enthusiasts and look very, very well put together and very high quality, such as the Donkey Kong Country Minecart Madness ride, which I am definitely very excited for next year. I can't wait to ride that in Florida. 
The appeal of Epic Universe is definitely really smart on Universal's part since it provides really high quality rides, attractions, and entertainment to a lot of different fandoms. Like if you're a fan of Universal Monsters, you have a whole land for that. If you like How to Train Your Dragon, you have a whole land for that. If you like Nintendo and Mario, you have a whole land for that. Disney seems to have only gleaned the IP lands idea from Universal and really glossed over a lot of why these IP lands appealed to people. At many of their D23 announcements, they showed actually a lot of concept art from their IP lands coming up, such as like from Lion King or Disney Villains, which is pretty obviously meant to directly compete with the Universal Monsters land, which will be interesting to see how that pans out. But the issue is, especially with the Lion King land, it's a bit harder to tell with the Disney Villains one. The Lion King Land, there is nothing there at all except for one single log ride, which is kind of weird coming out of Pride Rock anyway and in the desert of Africa. Definitely seems like a weird choice, but alright, whatever Disney, you do you, I guess. But also looking at most of the other IP lands they've announced, there's only like one ride in each, like the Monsters Inc. Land for instance. There is a really cool looking coaster there where you actually get to ride the doors from the movie. This is actually something a lot of Disney Parks fans have asked for for years, arguably since the movie first came out in 2001. But again, the issue here is that that seems to be the only attraction they're offering in this giant Monsters Inc. land. That's not really a good look at all, not a good sign if that's what they plan on doing. This is early concept art, I will give them that. But if this is exactly how it turns out to be whenever this land ends up coming out in the- That would result in a huge loss of interest and attendance probably in those IP lands because really if they're only going there for one ride and there's not much else to do, people aren't going to stick around, they're just going to leave and go find something else. Universal has actually put in a lot of effort on their IP lands, if that's what you want to call it, by putting at least like five attractions in each, clearly. They show that pretty blatantly in their trailer video that they released a few months ago. Universal has definitely been playing it very smart and very tactfully with their land, and it's very impressive to see. Gearing up for three different Harry Potter lands, in the near future is a really smart idea given how dedicated that fan base is and how huge that IP is as a whole, and how well they've done with those Harry Potter lands as well. Given the attractions are really fun, and it feels like you are actually stepping into one of the movies. Their Nintendo stuff is an equally smart choice in my opinion, because that captures a wholly different audience, that being gamers, and having Universal Monsters there captures a horror audience. It's perfect absolutely genius planning. Disney just has not really grasped that aspect of it yet at all though. And they're tearing down a lot of different attractions just to make way purely for these IP lands that might have like one or two attractions if you're lucky in them. The one with the most things to do in it looks like the Cars Land, which actually I'm not too mad about, even though I'm not a fan of the Cars movies. This Cars Land actually is a smart idea, because you can go around all the different environments that exist in the US and you get to do it driving your own car. Like that's actually a smart idea and that sort of results in a sense of exploration and actually giving someone something to do. Many of these other ideas I just don't think are smart at all. And tearing down classic attractions just to make way for huge IP lands with nothing in them is not a smart idea whatsoever. So now instead, let's look at Tokyo Disney and Disney Sea in particular. Looking specifically at Disney's Tokyo Sea area, you can definitely see a giant difference between how that park is handling its attractions and just variety of content overall as opposed to Walt Disney World. The theme of Tokyo Disney Sea, for those who may not know, is actually exploration, and when you enter the park, you're in a huge Mediterranean town, sort of to make you think you're entering some sort of like legendary like explorer story or adventurer story. It's really cool. And that entire park is based around the theme of exploration and adventure. There's a lot of Jules Verne inspired attractions, there's a lot of different Aladdin things, a huge Agrabah section, this little mermaid um, under the sea section you could go in, King Triton's Kingdom. And actually to the north there's a huge Fantasy Springs section which has stuff from Peter Pan, Tangled, and Frozen, so there's a pretty big variety here. You have like classic Walt Disney feeling attractions like, you know, the Jules Verne stuff like 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea or Journey to the Center of the Earth, but you also have IP representation kind of sprinkled in where it fits. Such as, like I said, Aladdin being in the whole Arabian Nights area, but also just seeing like general legends there like Sinbad and other things like that. You have like original things to the park mixed in with things that people will know from the movies or shows. And that's definitely a big thing Walt Disney World is missing here. 
They are simply just throwing IPs where they don't even really fit at all. Like Guardians of the Galaxy being an Epcot is a very blatant example of this. I love Guardians of the Galaxy and their movies, but just being an Epcot doesn't really make sense at all to see a Guardians of the Galaxy attraction there out of nowhere. So this is definitely an area where I think Tokyo Disney definitely has the leg up and American Disney really needs to learn from that. Next, we have the variety of attractions. This is something I sort of touched on a little bit in the previous topic, but I'll dive more into it here. What I mean by a variety of attractions is sort of like different levels of thrill and different types of attractions and different catering to different audiences with them. For instance, the Magic Teacups in Walt Disney World and Magic Kingdom are catering to a very different audience and are a very different kind of ride than Tron Light Cycle Run that just so happens to be in the same park. By default, I actually do have to say Walt Disney World does actually still do very well with their variety of attractions. You have sort of something for everyone there still, like a lot of different boat rides, a lot of faster coasters like Guardians of the Galaxy or Tron. You have slower paced stuff like the aforementioned teacups or even things like Dumbo or whatever. And you still have plenty of dark rides around like Winnie the Pooh or Roger Rabbit's Toontown Spin or Alice or what have you. Overall, Tokyo Disney actually is matched, I think, with Walt Disney World for this, since they do a lot of the same stuff. They have a lot of dark rides, like I said. They have a lot of the same attractions in Tokyo Disneyland that you see in normal Disneyland as well, although there are a few exceptions. Since there are exclusive attractions here, obviously, such as the View and the Beast ride that I went on, that was actually very, very good, and I was very impressed by it. The Stitch Encounter, which was basically like Turtles Hawk with Crush, but with Stitch, which is actually pretty awesome. And also the Monsters Inc. Ride and Go Seek Ride. So while there actually are different attractions and exclusive ones in Tokyo Disney, a lot of them are actually functioning on the same level as the Walt Disney World attraction. So I, I would say this is probably even between the two parks. This is one thing Walt Disney World still does very well. Now the other thing is satisfaction of customers. For those who may not know, Disney World has actually seen a significant drop over the last five years. Since 2019, they have continually seen diminishing returns and less and less customers coming into the park. In 2019, they actually had 13.8 million people come in that year, and in 2020, that had a very significant drop, for obvious reasons, going down to 4.1 million. That has slightly come up over the last few years, but not by much. Given 2023, they still only saw 8.7 million people come into the park the whole year, which is actually a 37% decrease in attendance. And a 10% lower attendance than Universal's parks now. Currently, Universal is actually beating out Disney in pretty much every way. Clearly, a lot of people, a lot of longtime park lovers, are actually very unhappy with what is currently going on at the parks and sort of a lack of direction and vision there. And a lot of people are just going to Universal instead. That isn't really the case at Tokyo Disney. Part of that is probably because it doesn't have to compete with much else. Universal Japan is a long ways away being in Osaka, although I did visit that park as well while I was in Japan. Get this video to at least 50 likes, and I'll do a video comparing Universal America to Universal Japan as well if you would like. But even excluding that, it just seems like people are a lot happier at Tokyo Disney than I've noticed at the Disney parks here in America. Even just like simple things like when I was going on the Peter Pan ride in Fantasy Springs, people were like clapping and singing along to all the songs. It was amazing. It actually seemed like the happiest place on earth, unlike our American parks, which is kind of wild to think about. Tokyo Disney really does seem to understand customer satisfaction and is able to continually get people to come back time and time again because they offer a lot of quality attractions and just quality entertainment as a whole. People actually seem really happy there, and it's awesome. I just wish it were the same at the American parks, and I just wish Disney could take a hint from these Asian parks that really seem to understand the, the classic Disney values, and are definitely prioritizing quality attractions over just shilling a bunch of IPs and dumping them in the parks or cross promotion. Maybe they will understand that someday, but for now, at least Tokyo Disney clearly gets it. So yeah, by and large, this is definitely the better park. Uh, American Disney, you gotta step it up. This is a lot better, this is more in line with classic Disney and what I think of when I think of Disney. So yeah, keep, keep making stuff like this. This is perfect, exactly what we need. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, give it a like. If you didn't like it, give it a like anyway. If you wanna check out all my socials down below, you can see all those down there. 
And if you want to join my Discord too, where you can communicate with me and others offline, that should be linked down below. And if you want to check out my letterbox, that is linked down below as well. That's where I review movies. Oftentimes, movies are shows I won't review here on YouTube, so you can check that out too if you want extra content from me. But uh, for now, I've been Noah the Otter, and I'll see you on the Otter side. Bye!